Tuning in, it is Tuesday, 7 p.m., and that's when we do this. Uh, what's our What's the the gist of today? Okay, cool. Uh, uh, so for our season finale, John and I. Uh, this is the first time we've been on the couch together, isn't it? I think it is a little weird. It's tension. Uh, yeah, last episode, but still some firsts. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, uh, we're gonna play. Uh, we're gonna play Ape Escape. I'm going to play Ape Escape. Uh, I'm gonna play Quake. Um, and meanwhile, I'm going to be asking John uh, some trivia about the monkeys. Uh, it's been I don't know anything about, um, but apparently John likes it or something. Uh, uh, that's supposed to tie into the ape escape somehow. Uh, it's dawning on me now that apes aren't monkeys. Same thing. Uh, that's probably not very good. We could have done this. Whatever. Much what, better. What game? Could we have done Monkey Island or something? I Monkey Ball? I don't know. Either way. Monkey Ball. Uh, I'm going to be playing Quake. John's going to be asking me questions about that. Uh, the reason why that ties in at all, if anyone knows, is um, Trent Reznor did the score to Quake. But again, we fucked up because we're playing the N64 version, which doesn't have anything to do with Trent Reznor. Uh, but I'll be asking you uh, pretty rapid fire Nine Inch Nails Nine trivia. All right. And we'll see if you, you know, if you can hold up. True fan or big, big poser. We're going to see who's the biggest uh, poser tonight. Indeed. On Discord Live. Season finale, episode 13. Uh, we got. John C. on the mixer. Wow. Uh, Steph on camera. Indeed. And that's it. That's 100% the people in this room. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I have played Ape Escape like twice, I think. So Once as a demo in our demo right. episode. I don't know if anyone saw our demo episode. Better if they didn't. No. Really. It was... It was rough around the edges. I messed up the sound on that episode. It's okay. It was only, like, right at the beginning, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, there's, like, two minutes like, where there's this yeah. weird echo going on. Like that one Tazon Day clip. <laughs> Which, if you haven't seen, there's a hilarious video of Tazon Day from Chocolate Rain fame uh, playing some modern game, and uh, 30 seconds in, his own voice starts echoing over his voice, and it just keeps accruing layers until it's this wall of Tazon Day. All right. Um, should, should we, we wait until I'm, like... In the first level. Uh, we've got a lot of these to get through. I think That's I'm just going to start. Thank you to Tim Hulsizer for uh, drumming up all these questions on very short notice. Tim Hawk. Indeed. All right. So, Th. without further ado, uh, question number one. All right. Name the four monkeys and where they were born. Four monkeys and where they were born. Um, David Jones, Manchester, England. Um, shit, I want to say Mike Nesmith, Dallas, Texas. Um... Mickey Dolans, George Michael Dolans, um, not sure of his birthplace. It's on the back of the first album, but I did not memorize this. And Peter Tork, also not sure where he is from originally. Uh, that's pretty good. Peter Halston Torkelson. <laughs> you named all four of them. Uh, I did. Ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, boy. <laughs> good job. Mickey Dolans uh, was born in L.A. Okay. Uh, it's Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Close. Peter Tork was Washington, D.C. I, oh, I uh, can see the font on the back of the first album now. Davy was from Manchester, England, but he was from he was born in Openshaw in Lan Lancashire. Okay. I can't even pronounce that. All right. I, that was a... Okay, Tim. At All least right. some points on that <laughs> one. All right. Here we go, number two. Yes. Uh, which monkey's mom had a famous invention, and what was it? That was Mike Nesmith, and it was uh, liquid paper, the typewriter correction fluid. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Icing them. Sorry. Uh, no, you're pretty good at this. Uh, <laughs> I'm impressed, guys. Um, what years did the original Monkeys TV show air? Uh, I want to say 66 to 67. 66 to 68. 68? Terrible. Ah, all right. Okay. So, I don't know if that's accurate. It might be accurate. It's probably accurate. I don't know. So it says on this piece of paper. All right. I'm just going in my head from when the albums came out. Okay. I'm just going to tear apart. I'm just going to assume I'm right. By the way, John, it's my if, day. if uh, anyone says anything interesting in chat, go ahead and stop me. Shut it off. Yep. Um, Beat the hell out of these. Why are there non-apes? 
What are those things supposed to be? I'm not certain. They're Why the little dumplings. Kidnapping these apes. They've escaped. Did you not read the title? The game. <laughs> it's not called Free Range Apes. Good for them. You have to learn the lore. Yeah. All right. Uh, this game is very anime, by the way. I apologize to everyone at home for that angle. Hey, it's John Christian. Um, <laughs> oh, at the mixer. I was like, huh. Spitting image. I think we made that joke before. After uh, the movie A Hard Day's Night inspired the idea for a TV mm. show, which band was the first choice to star in it? Ooh. I want to say The Birds? It's a Love and Spoonful. Love and Spoonful. That'd be a boring show. I'm not going to lie. I say uh, you've got one and a half of these right. All right. That's fine. Someone else might want to keep track of it. Um <laughs> What band was Mickey Dolan's in before the Monkees? What band was he in? Yeah. Tim found some hard stuff. He clearly did. Time. Jesus. I know, like, other... I'm a little worried. Yeah, I'm a little worried, too. Damn it, Tim. What band was Mickey... Mickey Dolan's? Yeah, that's what it says. In a band. Mickey Dolan. That's not as that's spelled. <laughs> it's, it's spelled wrong on here. <laughs> oh. So it's a so, fake question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a trick question. Um, I'm going to say I don't know, but okay. I'm probably going to kick myself when I it's hear it. It's The Missing Links. Missing Links. That is two on the nose, Okay. dare I say. It's actually option 30. Yeah. Um, which two songwriters helped the band come up with material when they were starting out? I'm going to say Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, which song became the closing title theme for the second season of the TV show. That song is called For Pete's Sake. That's right. Doing better? Yeah. <clears throat> Three Rapid and a half. fire. Rapid fire. Okay. Uh, Feel free to take your time also. Nope, nope. <laughs> Name the A-side and B-side of the band's first single. Ooh. Ooh. First single. Jesus. And B-side. First single, I'm pretty sure, was the theme song. And the B-side, I'm going to guess, was Take a Giant Step? Close. You got the B-side right. Okay. Uh, was it Last Train to Clarksville? That's right. Yeah. Damn it. Okay. All right. Which monkey was on the Ed Sullivan Show the same night as the Beatles' famous American TV debut in 1964? Uh, Davy Jones doing a song from Oliver, I believe. Yeah, wow. Yeah. What up? Dang. <laughs> Alright, can you name any phrase or sentence from the original Monkeys audition advertisement? Audition advertisement? Yeah, there's an audition Oh, um, looking for Ben Frank's types. Yeah. Yeah. Ben Frank's was a club, mm -hmm. a, hip, a hip youth club, and they wanted that type of person to be in their program. Interesting. Yeah, I forget what the rest of it was. Uh, I can read it. Do it. <laughs> Madness. Yeah. Auditions. Folk and roll music musicians singers for acting roles in new TV series. Running parts for four insane boys age 17 to 21. Couldn't... Hmm. Uh, mm. Problematic. Uh, want spirited Ben Franks types. Have courage to work. Must come down for interview. Call H0 65188. How freaked out would you have been if I'd known the phone number? <laughs> Be like, H0. Am I getting it? John, apropos of that, how do you know this stuff? I like read a lot knowledge. about them as a youth. I was really into the monkeys from, like, age 10? Probably all through middle, like, fifth grade forward, and I got a lot of shit for it, but my sister and her husband were big fans, and I used to mimic everything they did, but That's I really also... Wholesome. Yeah, I, I very earnestly like the monkeys to this day. Monkeys so. are pretty wholesome. But yeah, no, that is, I've, I've read more than my share of uh, monkey literature. Sweet. All right. What, what do we got next? These apes have escaped. Uh, are we ready for another one? Yeah. All right. Which uh, monkey yes. appears for a second in the Beatles' 1967 promo clip for A Day in the Life? Oh, um, I'm going to guess Mickey Dolan's? It's Mike Nesmith. Mike Nesmith. Weird. I know they all met. But what, yeah, shit. What roles did these four people play in the band? In the band? Uh, okay. They kind of differed. Is know. this a question or just your I'm question? I'm just like, I have no idea who these four people are. Um, well, they were all actors, is the thing. Two of them were musically skilled and two were not. Really? Davey and Mickey were just <laughs> actors, but they took up uh, 
drums and I'm I guess maraca mostly. The same. But I mean he yeah but uh, Davy Jones is a Broadway person or a West End person that's why he was in Oliver huh. and on Ed Sullivan. But yeah. So yeah, aside from singing, they uh, very much had to learn instruments. So Too it. sweet. <clears throat> okay. Get you monkey. Ape. Sorry. Right, what is the name of the TV show's final episode? Uh, Midgekogio or the Frodus Caper. Yep. Yeah, dude. What does Midgekogio mean? It is the first, like, syllables, I think, of all of Mickey Dolan's siblings. I know yeah. one of them's Coco, one of them's George for George Michael Dolan's, but I don't know the other two. But yeah, I'm assuming it's like Michael and Jack or something. Alright, we're about halfway through these. I'm doing good. I have creeped you out. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more than one enough. Uh, what TV show did Mickey star in before The Monkees? Circus Boy. Yep. I lost track of how many you've got right. It's just uh, it's That's a lot. That's cool. Don't worry about it. Um, you can go through these just, chat, by the way, is extraordinarily impressed by what we're seeing here with the trivia. Yeah. Now, nice. Makovsky Maniac says, I'm happy knowing math and science <laughs> instead of monkey's trivia. <laughs> <laughs> well, Do you know any math, John? <laughs> um, not really. Mm. No, this is very impressive, though. David John, Jones, have yeah. you ever edited the monkey's Wikipedia page? No, I have not. I've only ever vandalized Wikipedia as a youth. I just drowned. Oh, oh no. no. My guy died. That was, that was sad. That's really not where the stakes are, though, here. So. That's true. That is true. All right. Yeah. I'm going to hit you another one. <laughs> nice. Which monkey had a solo top 40 hit in 1970, and what was the song? I'm going to guess Davy Jones, and the song was Girl? Wrong. Damn it. Another guess? What year? 70. 70. 1970. Oh, god damn it. Um, Mike Nesmith and Joanne? That's right. Yeah. Good First job. national band. Sorry. The chat. Uh, <laughs> how many has he gotten right? <laughs> Let me know. Uh, number 15. Uh, which monkey had the nickname Frito? Frito? Frito. Frito. I'm gonna guess Mickey, but I don't think I actually know. Davy Jones. Frito? Like Frito the corn chip? It looks, it's spelled like Frito Lays. Did he go on to like become a no, he... mogul of snack foods? I don't think so. Hmm. Interesting. Ooh. A beetle that John has gotten, I have to figure out the decimal places here, nine quadrillion questions right, so that's cool. Yeah. Chat also points out that today is John Solari's birthday. Oh no. That's right. And I Eek. propose that we actually sing Happy Birthday. Would that be at this, at this juncture? We're going to get right, stripped right. of our copyright. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Really get flagged. I think that's oh, yeah, that, that ended. That, that ended, ended a couple years ago, so yeah, we can do stuff. it. Lead us in. One, All right, two, two three, three, four. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jonathan. Happy birthday to you. How old are you, John? Thanks, guys. I'm 22. <laughs> 32. Uh, yeah, so we got John a Four Loco for his birthday. Yeah. Good, good friends. Yeah, Four Loco, hit us up. At Discar yeah. Live. This We're episode, on yeah. It's also sponsored by Four Loco and Gold Bond. Yes. Um, <laughs> they have, with they've just kept up their sponsorship deal. With yeah, <laughs> they're seeing great returns. The official, uh, what even is that? I don't know, official but it gave me like weird a powder. Of um, yeah, it's like medicated powder. Official for medicated your balls. powder of you know for your life. balls. It's in the commercial probably. Yeah, you just put it on your hand, then you put your hand under your balls. All right. That's not. We what can't we did say it that. on the TV, but <laughs> or if you want to pull stunts with a billion gloves. Mm -hmm. Did you raid a nurse's supply closet for your own weird thing? Uh, uh, no. Did not. Oh. By the way, that was probably our funniest episode, so... If you yeah, guys... go back in the archives. It's, yeah. some, some about... Hurricane Hawk was there. Uh, we did something with fighting games. It was fun. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I know what that room was. What was the name of the TV music video show Mike Nesmith made in 1979 that foreshadowed MTV a few years later? Elephant Parts. Wrong. Oh, Mr. Mike's... All duck sauce, some shit like that. No? Disappointing. Elephant Parts is the one he won the Grammy for, the first Grammy for a video. Pop clips. Pop 
pop clips. Okay, that does sound right. God damn it! Tim Holzheiser. Yeah. He's giving me these red herrings where he knows what I'm gonna think it is. Yeah. He knows. He's playing games with you. From, he is. From afar. He's really just messing with me. He's down in Hot Lanta right now. Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Yeah. Tim. Tim Holzheiser. Shout out to Tim. He's off on a quest for love right now. So. Godspeed. Oh, he's he's just nearby. <laughs> He's come. just not here. He's just... That's cool, you know. Um, in his appearance on the monkeys, what did Liberace use to destroy a piano? You can repeat these if you wanted to. Oh no, I, I heard it. I'm just trying to remember. Jesus. I'm gonna guess sledgehammer? That's right. Okay. The job is a tech, specifically a golden sledgehammer. That sounds... Very Liberace, Very Liberace yeah. Liberace-esque. What kind of modified car became the Monkey Mobile? Um, it was. Well, there's two. The 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 nor the one in the pilot was a Woody. It was like a wood paneled surfer car, but that was not the official Monkey Mobile. It was the '66 uh, Pontiac GTO. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Best Sorry. of the you get, you get two points for that one. Thank you. <laughs> two uh, of the points are not even track <laughs> Uh, yeah. Walk up the slope. Let me up. Uh, which boxer appear in the monkeys movie Head? Sonny Liston. That's right. Dang. I've watched that movie a billion times as a child, and it has affected me in ill ways. I imagine. I highly recommend it. It's a very fun movie, but it is probably not the best thing to show an impressionable mind. You captured that monkey. I did. So what is head? Head? Oh Christ! Um, the monkeys and Jack Nicholson got really high and wrote a movie. How fun! <laughs> and it's just like whatever ideas they came up with, they threw in the movie. Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. He's in it for a split second during like a behind the scenes uh, kind of meta segment. I like it a lot. It's very fun. Has a good soundtrack. But yeah, it is not the most like narrative friendly. Not Actually, the most, yeah. Sounds interesting. It is. It's really. It's nothing like the show. That's the thing. They were like, we want to not make the TV yeah. show because the TV show is like a very like a goofy, Marx Brothers ish romp, or a Hard Day's Night uh -huh. kind of a deal. Whereas this, they were just like, no, nope, we're. Everybody basically interprets it as career suicide because they oh. were tired of being the monkeys. I don't know if it's that dire, but was it at least like fun? You know, like yeah, it was fun. It had a lot of weird um, little cameos, like Frank Zappa shows up for a second. Um, Sonny Liston is there for a second. Annette Funicello, isn't it? Uh -huh. um, but yeah, it's basically they keep cutting to like a guy changing channels, and that's basically how the movie feels. Like they keep <laughs> wandering through weird, different Hollywood type sets, and it's there's sort of a thread you can follow, but it's not terribly important if you do. In my eyes, anyway. That sounds a lot like uh, the Spice Spice World to me, actually. I haven't watched that in years. I, I remember, like, I was I watched it when it came out when I was like, I don't know, like eleven. Yeah. And uh, I remember being weirded out at how but, there really really wasn't a plot. It was just a <laughs> bunch of different things happening, and nice. it was like surreal to my eleven year old head. It's weird how things like that can kind of like throw you. Like if a for me specifically, if a sitcom deviates from its established universe or mm -hmm. norm even a little, I get creeped the hell out. It's like, and I don't know why, because it's like, yeah. obviously it's the most fake thing you could possibly watch, but if they deviate from a specific fake, I get really, it's just not okay. It's weird, John. It's learning a lot about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when Peter Tork bought out his monkey's contract and left, mm -hmm. what did Mike Nesmith present to him? Present to him? Jesus, I know this. That I feel like real I obscure. just, I feel like I just heard about this somewhere too. God damn it. I think it was like, I want to say a watch that says like from the boys at work. That's right. Okay. Gold watch engraved with from the guys down at work. There we go. Wow. I feel like I, I read something about that recently, but not in prep for this episode. Yeah, I would like uh, <laughs> accuse you of cheating if that was possible right now. <laughs> um, oh, man. What does, did Nesmith, Dolan's, and Jones film the last time they were all together in the original incarnation of the group? What did they film together? With Nesmith? Nesmith, Dolans, and Jones. So this was after Peter Tork left, we're saying. It sounds like it. Okay, Nesmith, Dolans, and Jones. So that would have, there was only one album. No, two albums. Fuck. Well, I know they did appearances on like the Johnny Cash show and I think the Glenn Campbell show, but I'm not sure if this is going to be like a promo clip for a song. It says film. 
film. Shit. That pterodactyl clips into view when you're like no. four feet away from I can, it. I think there's a way I can do. Yeah, let me look at that tarot man. Hey, buddy. I'm gonna I'm gonna give up on this one. I don't rightly know. It Whoa! Like, it took me. Whoa! I guess that was the point, because I didn't know where to go in this level. Nice. Hmm? Uh, nope, just right there. No, he just put me down the fucking the slide from a Christmas story. Aww. Good parenting. Um, it was a Kool Aid commercial. Fuck! I've seen that Kool Aid commercial. That was it. That was the they're last in, thing. They're in the desert. I've seen it. I, that was one of the first things I downloaded off like Kazaa. Not, <laughs> not even fucking kidding. God, that is uh. And uh, in the '80s, they did one for Pizza Hut, but it was Ringo calling up all the lads to get the band back together, but the lads were the monkeys minus Mike Nesmith. And they were like, these aren't the lads. And meanwhile, you know, everybody at home gets a good laugh. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, God I damn it. I, oh, I'm so mad, because I totally know that commercial. I feel like there was, like, a special song in it, but I don't remember it. Can I fuck up this, like, John McCain page and then? What is this? <laughs> Ooh. Hey. What? Uh... Rest in peace. He's not here. <laughs> He's not dead yet. Really. <laughs> yeah. Um, John McCain, if you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that time. You're a POW. Uh, I think the first thing I downloaded off of Kazaa was an Aquabats music video, like an anime music video. Nice. Specifically. That's pretty great. Um, that sounds super rad. You know who directed the super rad video? Oh, wait. Uh, you're talking about an AMV. <laughs> yeah, Project Aco. <laughs> Dude, Project Aco. I've seen it. Uh, I got the laser disc. What was the only charting single from the album Pool It? Heart and Soul. Yep. Had to be. <laughs> Number 72. Yeah, not a not a successful record. I'm fond of it, but it's, it's bad. Which album's cover features a drawing by Bernard Ye Yezin of the Four Monkeys? Their facial features blank, standing in a field of flowers. Uh, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones Limited. That's right. Yeah. They were gonna draw in the faces, but they were like, no, that looks dope. Cool. That sounds, uh... That's, like, pretty much the story. <laughs> that's kind of creepy. It's a neat cover. I mean, I can show you. Uh, I got copies of these albums, bro. How about instead you answer this question? Oh, yeah, I can try that, then. Name at least five of the non-monkeys songwriters who contributed to the Ooh. 2016 album Oh, Good shit, times. the new one. Um... I'm going to say uh, Rivers Cuomo, Ben Gibbard. Uh, those are the two easy ones. Harry Nilsson, technically. Fuck, who else? The guy from Come Fountains on. of Wayne, something Schlesinger. Wayne Schlesinger? Is Fountains of Wayne got a guy named Wayne in it? <laughs> Leon Schlesinger, the guy who directed here. Looney Tunes? Um, fuck, I know this. Oh, oh, shit, Andy Partridge. One more. Got a little assist, thank you. Thank you. This, the, the, there's one more. It's a, there's a lot more. One of these names came up yesterday when we were prepping this episode. Oh, shit. Trent Reznor. No. <laughs> <laughs> In a, a coup to end all musical coups. <laughs> God damn it, I totally should know. Um, you said non-monkeys writers specifically, right? Yeah. So I can't list off a person in the band. Non-monkeys. Yes. Um, let me think back. I gotta tap out on that last one. Could have said. Oh wait, did you say something Schlesinger? I did. All right, you got it. Found a way in guy. Adam Sch Adam, Schlesinger. there it is. I saw him live. He was right. he co-wrote some of the Josie and the Pussycats soundtrack, and he came out and played guitar on one of the songs. Uh, and the... yet I confused. I was just like last name guy. I don't know who Schlesinger. that is. Schlesinger. Found a way. Nope. Uh, Stacy's mom has got it going on. Why were we talking? No. Oh man. Who did you think we were talking about? Uh, uh, well, well, I have a radar. Okay, okay. Um, some other names. This one, I was just talking about that band recently. Um, oh, right, right. Jeff Barry, Joey Levine, uh, Voice and Heart. Oh man. Neil Diamond is the one that we were talking about. That's sounds... Oh, that doesn't count. That's that was an old song. Love to Love was a song they recorded in the '60s and then like overdubbed some shit onto oh, okay. for the Good Times album. Sorry, Tim. Would have been a good... Sorry, Tim. No, I think that'd be a good loophole. Uh. No, it is. The Harry Nilsson thing, too, because that was already a song that existed because he died in, like, the 80s, I want to say. Yeah. Is that Neil Diamond alive? Anyway. Neil Diamond is. Interesting. I think. Hey, right. I caught a monkey. That's what we're going to do next season. Finish off Neil Diamond. <laughs> Paul Weller. <laughs> Jesus. Jerry Goffin. Paul, oh. Carol, Carol King. King. Yeah. These are all people that wrote for them back in the day, as well. 
for the most part. I mean, not Rivers Cuomo. <laughs> like, All right. Last, All right. Last question, uh, which takes us that's a perfect Shit. amount of time. All right. Uh, what was the name of the bonus track on Good Times that only came on the version sold at FYE stores? The bonus track. Jesus. Terrified? Something like that? No. Oh, what was it called? A Better World. A Better World. I didn't have the bonus track. I bought it. You didn't buy it at FYE, I guess. I didn't. Who buys things at FYE? It's 2016 it's at true. that time. All right. Well, all right. Damn. Thank you, Tim, for uh, shredding my brain considerably. That was pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd say you right. got, I don't know, all of them? Yeah. All of them. We'll say. Chance is 69 of them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I like those odds. Nice. 420 questions right. Yeah, dude. Whoa. Fucking live. How are, how are the levels, chat? <laughs> oh, that's so loud. <laughs> so, in addition to answering trivia, we are also going to perform covers of songs by these groups Glorious in covers. the style of the other group that the other person likes. So this is about to be a, a Nine Inch Nails tune in an approximation of the style of the monkeys. Alright, uh... If we can help it. Be nice. Yes, please be nice to us. You're gonna want to get me and, uh... John Christian more. That's true. Or, 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 you Focus on the, them Johns. <laughs> you ready, boys? I'm ready. Talking to myself. <laughs> you hear the bass? Yep. All right. <laughs> Welcome to our practice, you guys. As we could possibly do it. I love it. Oh, oh geez. Talking to myself all the way to the station. Pictures in my head of the final destination. All lined up, all the ones that aren't allowed to stay. Tried to save myself, but myself keeps slipping away. What a oh! What a oh! Tried to save a place from the cuts and the scratches. Tried to overcome the complications and the catches. Nothing ever grows and the sun doesn't shine all day. Tried to save myself, but myself keeps slipping away. What a oh. What a oh. Save myself, but myself keeps slipping. Alright, there. Third <laughs> time was the charm. Sick. Thank you, chat. Thank you, Hurricane Hawk. Surprise guest, Hurricane Hawk. My birthday magic, I summoned him. High off Luchador Mountain, where he lives in Master Roshi's hut. Alright, can I join y'all on the couch now? Yeah, join us on the couch, right. dude. Fantastic. 
Oh, we gotta switch consoles. We and do, and it's instantaneous. Whoa, dude, there it is. Oh, immediate rest. Some some quake. Boom. Let's say hit reset, but the uh, the N64 we're using on loan, the reset button has been like jizzed yeah. down yeah. into a state of permanent. It's not his, but it was originally nah. some other kids. This is a. There's actually a, another John on this. This uh, console before. Not me. all Johns like spooge on the N64 though. Well, this one, this one maybe S did. Statistically, in this room, maybe. Is uh, it from Red John? It is the reddest John. Oh no. Which is okay. Hold on, oh, I gotta my. get this shit a little set up before I start, or else I'll forget. My sister just sent me a picture of the birthday cake from the first Harry Potter film, where Hagrid misspells like every word. It's very cute. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, that was super impressive, by the way. Uh, the the car, the monkey's car one. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, the fact that you knew more than the question I had to ask. Uh, am I fucking with the? Is it clipping whenever I move the microphone? Sorry. I think it sounds fine. All right. Speaking of I sounding think, fine, yeah. I think if we see John Christian wince, we'll know. But how does the uh, the music in this version of Quake, John John Christian? I can't hear it. Is there music in it? Yeah, the TV's down very low. Which is like fine. It's like generic, like... Burp, 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 yeah. Burp, 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 burp. Quick has an amazing soundtrack that uh, you don't get to hear because it's not on... It's usually a PC game. We were going to get the PC version, but mm. we somehow broke two Raspberry Pis in the running of this show. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> season's over. I ran out of computers. Yeah. Like, They're very expensive. Last episode, we played Doom, and thank God it worked then. Don't know True. what happened between now and that, then. Yeah. I think Doom, they were like, all right, but with Quake, it was like, all right, no, I'm not made for this. I'm made to do, like, one task. All right, are you ready for the first quest? Sure, let's bring it on. All right, where is Nine Inch Nails from originally? Where is, uh, just Trent Reznor or the band? Um, it says, uh, N-I-N. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio? Correct. Uh, Trent Reznor was born in Philadelphia, if that's a question. There we go, all right. Flex and nuts. Mm, like or Pennsylvania somewhere, maybe not Philadelphia. All right, question the next. Which two Nine Inch Nails songs won Grammys? Uh, probably Closer. Nope. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Grammys? Grammys. Who gives a shit? Um, yeah, same. Come on, uh, Tim. Jesus. It's a uh, uh, head like a hole? Probably no. not. Yeah, that, that should have Bizarrely, been they're both on Broken. Um, oh. Wish and Happiness and Slavery. Weird. Uh, yeah, that's Would what not I'm have thinking. gotten those. Yeah. I've wondered if it was for, like, engineering. Yeah, or I don't know. Like what? It's not like best pop single. Like, maybe compared to other metal songs, it's like Grammy palatable. Oh, fair, yeah. Maybe it's like, they did eventually introduce like a metal uh, category, right? I feel like. Maybe, maybe that's what that was for. Maybe we have to do a lot of post-show research, obviously, too. Alrighty, um, what synth pop group did Trent Reznor play keyboards in before Nine Inch Nails? The Exotic Birds. Yep. Uh, there's but they, some I think others. you have an extra credit. You mentioned them earlier. Uh, option thirty. It's not listed, but I know that that's. Uh, and there's also there's yeah. another one, Slam Bamboo. Slam Bamboo. That's a terrible name. Yeah. Which one is on on his piece of paper? Exotic Birds. Okay. All right. All, um, all of those uh, sort of. Next question. Um, what ridiculous lip-syncing pop music TV show did Nine Inch Nails appear on to promote Pretty Hate Machine? I don't know. What? Uh, Dance Party USA. Would not have known that. I remember, I, I remember the clip went around like a few years back because Trent posted it himself and he was like, I think Skrillex owes me some publishing on that hair. Because very much as the Skrillex dude. Yeah, and it had like a whole video he did. True. Um, so this is a bit of trivia that would have been nice. Mm -hmm. in, in, in the computer version of this game, th this is an ammo pickup I'm looking at right now. The nails for the nail gun that I have right here. It had the Nine Inch Nails logo on it. Uh, but we don't ha even have that in the N64 version. Wow. Just <laughs> clearly. If we had the little no. RAM expansion, do you think it would have been visible? Or? No, it's it's just, it's I just think, licensing, probably. That's fair. I'm getting sound effects in the game, but, like, no music. Interesting. That's fine. I, he might have done the sound effects, too, actually. Yeah, he did. And that, mm -hmm. they're awesome sound effects, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, which music video got Nine Inch Nails investigated by the FBI for being a possible snuff video? That was uh, Down In It. Correct. Uh, yeah, they, they, so they, I kind of have a little bit more of a story on that. Do it. Um, there was a shot where they they tied a bolex to a balloon, 
mm. so that they could get this thing where it lifted off, and the tether for the balloon broke, mm. and so this camera just went flying off in the field. And it was supposed to be like it was supposed to look like gang violence, like a, a guy had died, and there are people standing around him, and this the camera was supposed to go up, and they're supposed to pull it back down with the tether, <laughs> but instead it just went up into the atmosphere, and the eventually it, it came back down in some farmer's field who found it and took it to the police. I love that they like, oh, we found this camera, let's develop the role of film in it. And oh my god, like, it's oh, dead shit. people. It's, yeah, <laughs> gang violence. Um, which Ken Burns documentary <laughs> contains music by Nine Inch Nails? It's Vietnam. Indeed. Vietnam War. Alrighty. Why was Nine Inch Nails' recording studio Le Pig infamous? Uh, it was um, the where uh, Manson's gang killed the Tate family. Indeed. Crushing it. Um, let's see. Uh, what was the name of the Downward Spiral album tour? Uh, oh, shoot. Was that the um, Self Destruct tour? It was. Damn. Oh, damn, you're crushing Kind of a guess. Uh, those are valid. Remember the SATs? Yeah, yeah. Remember those? <laughs> yeah, somehow. They're pretty good in those. Did the same strategy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think so. Well, I mean, 100% so far. Oh, okay. Right. No, it's uh, minus one because of yeah. the Grammy question. But everything oh, else. Oh, uh, oh, Grammy the, and Dance Party Dance USA. Dance Party USA. So it's two that we do not have. But so far, so, 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 so pretty good. So pretty good. Which Nine Inch Nails music video proved controversial for its religious and S&M imagery? Uh, probably Happiness and Slavery. Uh, that, that one got banned. Mm. And it had S&M imagery for sure. Mm -hmm. They also cl Closer had s and imagery, but like less so than Happiness and Slavery. What's your final answer? Well, Happiness and Slavery got banned. That was definitely controversial. I'm going to go with that. Um, the answer I have here is Closer, which for the religious aspect, I will say, is more accurate, because Happiness and Slavery is just Bob Flanagan and getting uh, was shit no poked into him. Religious thing. stuff, okay. Then he gets ground up into meat. Is Closer the one with the, the monkey? The monkey on the yeah. cross, yeah. Okay. And there's a, there's a good amount of, like, Trent yeah. Restrained, I feel like. Definitely more religious imagery. All right. Just looking like a snack. That one was a kind of hard question, just because there's. It was. It was a little. It was a little tricky. He throws yeah, in some yeah, tricks. Yeah. Mr. Hellsizer. Definitely true. Yeah. He, oh, ooh. All right. Who did people think the song Starfuckers Incorporated was referring to? Uh, Hint, they appeared on stage with Nice Nails in 2000 and buried the hatchet. And, and they were in the video, the video. too. Yeah. Uh, uh, Marilyn Manson. What's Marilyn Manson's real name? Oh, I know it, but I forget. Brian Warner. Brian. It's not on here, but I'm just... Paul from the Wonder Years? <laughs> he <laughs> <had> moved <laughs> so he could hug Kevin from the Wonder Years better. <laughs> oh, man. That's what I call it, too. Yeah. <laughs> Hugging Kevin. Hugging Kevin. Kevin All right. Bro. Name the 2002 album on which Johnny Cash recorded his famous version of the song Hurt. Oh, uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a Man in Black or something or something like that? I don't know. That might have been the subtitle. What was but it? No, American Four. Okay. Actually, and I think it was called The Man Comes Around. Okay. It was the actual full title of the album. But, but cool. no, you don't get that one. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, bro. It's fine. That was a hard one. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah no, I'm these are good pretty questions. excited about these. Thank you again, Tim. Uh, which Nine Inch Nails album streamed online on the band's MySpace page before it came out in physical form? Uh, the Slip? No. Uh, I mean, probably, ghosts. but no. Uh, MySpace, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I got dated, I guess. <laughs> um. The one sounds like Bill Cosby oh. saying the chorus. It wasn't with teeth. It was with teeth. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, man, MySpace was around then? Like, the teeth, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because then his slip came <laughs> out for free. Uh, like <laughs> With the teeth. Uh. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> we should just do dirty riddles we about both bands for next that. season. <laughs> What's the best monkeys limerick? Oh, my God. I'll do that tonight. <laughs> During this episode now. Um, who directed the music video for the Nine Inch Nails song Only? Oh. Do you remember this video? I do. Jean Michael Jarre? No. No. As a the guy did tubular, tubular bells? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, he's just... <laughs> no, oh, uh, that's not who I was thinking of. I, I don't know. Who is it? Uh, David Fincher. Oh, oh, hey. That was not a good music video. No, was that the one where it was like the pin Yeah, it was just thing? that pin thing. Yeah. It's about as deep as Fight Club was. Just, yeah, yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a pin <laughs> thing. Burn. 
Uh, That's a better see. video. <laughs> Which documentary chronicles the 2005 to 2006 tour? Documentary. I'd, I'd call it a DVD. Yeah, probably. I've seen this. Miles, uh, our friend Miles has. This. Miles Prower was that what yeah. you were about to say? <laughs> yeah. You sent <laughs> my friend Tails. <laughs> uh, uh, can we include links somehow in anything? You sent me a really good picture of, of uh, Tails wearing a nice nails shirt. Actually, it's really oh God, relevant that's true. right now. Yeah. Um, we'll put that in the uh, in the description for this episode when it's on YouTube. Wait, what years again? 2005 to 2006. We have goodbye tour? No. Uh, what was it? Beside You in Time. Oh, fuck. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I knew that. Yeah. Whoops. That's a good song. Yeah. I would agree. Here's one of these fiend things that comes out of this hole. Ah, you can crush it. You know half the trivia. You know mm. where the little men are. Yeah. The little skinless men. The little man. Just little man's. What year does the album Year Zero take place in? Oh. Don't say zero. I know it's the future. I don't know mm. exactly, like 2020 or something. It's supposed to be like near future. 2022. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. Pretty close. All right. We got another one of these. Um, name at least three people besides Trent Reznor who have been members of Nine Inch Nails, either in studio or on tour. Uh, Chris Vrenna. Hold up. Right. <laughs> it's a big list. I'm just got to scan it. Three people? Yeah, three people. Uh, uh, Atticus Ross. Atticus Ross, I got Alessandro it. Cortini. Got Cortini. Vrenna is definitely on that list. Twiggy Ramirez. Um, yeah, Chris Vrenna, sorry. Uh, He's in there. Uh, yeah, you, you passed with flying colors. But keep going, man. Um, Who else you got? So, Robin Fink is another person you should mention. And then we can be done. Robin <laughs> Fink, there it is. Yeah, I know. Who's a scenario? Uh, Alessandro Cortini. He's uh, uh, he's a keyboard player for Nationals right now, and his solo stuff's amazing. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, number seventeen. We're going right through these. If we get a time check, where are we at in the hour? It is uh, seven forty-one. Oh, plenty of time. We're doing great. Building. <laughs> what does the build the, build the necropolis? Oh, Midway produces. That's interesting. All right, which two thousand nine iPhone slash iPod exclusive rhythm game used music from the albums Ghosts 1 through 4 and The Slip. A rhythm game used ghosts? <laughs> Apparently. You don't remember that album? Wait, wait it, was an, it was an iPod exclusive thing? It was in, like, iOS, it looks like. iPhone, iPod. Maybe it meant iPad? I can't see having a game on an iPod. iPod Touch, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember how an iOS device. Nine Inch Nails Revenge! Really? <laughs> a terrible name. Really? Yeah. Wait, there's a game called Nine Inch Nails Revenge. It's a rhythm game. Yeah. Oh no. I think we all need to make a quick. Uh, yeah, app yeah. Score we should be playing tonight. that right now on yeah. screen. Spin up an emulator. Oh fuck. <laughs> that makes me kind of sad for real. Mm -hmm. We know he works for Apple now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That's true. Beats. I, I wonder why he does that. It's not like he needs money. I don't. Maybe he does need money. It's got we all a, need money. It's quite a synthesizer habit. Metasonics don't pay for themselves. They do not. Do you hear the thing where, like, every boutique synth maker in the world, like, apparently, if it's not the guy from the Magnetic Fields, it's Trent Reznor, or yeah. vice versa, <laughs> is, like, to buying buy up shit. the really limited oh. shit? That was definitely true at one point. But now they just collab already, make the saddest <laughs> album I've ever heard. Sorry. That'd be so weird. It would be really weird. But would it? I don't know if it would. Maybe not. Um, who is Trent Reznor married to? Marquine Mandig. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Mary Queen, something like that. Yeah, Mary Queen Mandig. Two A's and writing around. Indeed. Which? What country is she from? I don't care. What country is she from? I don't know. I'd have to. I'd guess. I don't have a browser tab open. I can't like add to the document. No, maybe he's a. No, he knew. Trying to trying to quiz me. Quiznos. What is this? What is what? No. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Which 2012 cross-platform shooter game did Trent Reznor compose the theme song for? Uh, it was one of the Call of Duties. Which one? Mo Modern Warfare? Nope. Uh, I'll give you half a point for knowing the franchise, but Black Ops 2. Okay, I never played which, any of those games. Really, really, Tim. Alright. Uh, I guess that's... That's the, it's, fair, it's, it's relevant. That's the best of the Call of Duty games. Alright. You're saying that because you can hide. It had Zork in it. <laughs> it's Zork, Zork in it? Yeah. Wait, you could break out of your interrogation chair and there was a terminal behind you. Oh, I've Zork seen this. Yeah. That's awesome. I hope you know he also died in the water. Oh. Same night. 
theme. Oh, nice, it is. The real theme is dying in the water. Dying in the water. We're all going to drown ourselves in yeah, the episode. Yeah, that's why it's the end of the season. Yeah. Only season. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, you guys. I love you. Didn't get enough viewers. This is our, We had oh. a lot riding on this episode. It's really just a cry for help. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, what digital music service launched in 2013 with Reznor as chief creative officer? Oh, uh, it was the, the Jay-Z one. Uh, what was that called? Uh, super relevant. Um, I guess I don't remember the name. Um, I know the one you're talking about, but it's it not is that? not what I have listed. Is it Apple Music then? Apple Music. Yeah. No. Oh. What I have here is Daisy, which I've never heard of in my life. Oh. It does say 2013, which is... A while 20, ago. Yeah, a while ago. Huh. Maybe he's been trying to do this for a while, I guess. I guess, yeah. Because I, I don't think... Like... He, he did stuff for the Jay-Z thing and, and yeah, Apple title. Music. Yeah, it was titled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess just all of them. True. Except for Spotify for some reason. Which 2013 music video contained an epileptic seizure warning? 2013? Yes. I'm not as up on the newer ish stuff. Mm. That's not very new, but man. <laughs> it's. Um, uh, After Fragile, AF. That's where we draw the line, basically, yeah, that's right? Like, that's for me, it's true. That's, I guess, probably true for everybody. Um. Sorry, Came Back Haunted? Yeah. Nice. Who directed it? Bonus David point. Lynch. Yeah. That's that not a, on here, but... That was a good music video. It was. I think the Razorhead Baby made a... Uh, come back. Man. Alrighty. Name at least one of the bands that played with Nine Inch Nails on their 2013 tour. I feel like you saw this tour. I feel like... Godspeed, you Black Emperor? Again? Correct. Alright, nice. You were yeah, at the same that show was as me and show, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ryan, what's up? You gave us up there. I was like, what, what year did I go see them? <clears throat> this is worded strangely, but I'm going to trust it. On the Fragile EP and the Downward Spiral album, Trent Reznor played a Mellotron keyboard previously owned by John one famous Lennon. musician. It, it was broken, not fragile. Ah, uh, there it is. That makes more sense. Really, a Mellotron. Yep. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, John Man Marilyn Manson owns it now. That sounds right. Sloppy second thirds, mellow mellow thirds, mellow trons. Episode brought to you by Four Loco. Happy birthday to me. Alrighty. Um, opening for which band caused Trent Reznor to call it the worst performances we ever played in front of the most hostile, moronic audiences I've ever experienced. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, it's one of those hair metal bands. <laughs> which one? Uh, it's either Poison or Guns N' Roses. What is your final answer? Gun, guns and Roses. Correct. Nice. That was a guess. Of <laughs> <clears throat> what was the original final question? This has flown by, hasn't it? Are you just <laughs> grilling your friends on yeah, industrial. Yeah. Well, we're doing metal. two different bits. That's today, true. So this is like this is like zippity zip zap zop. This is how you should probably best. feel, honestly. <laughs> true. Yeah. All right. I just don't want to go. What was the original planned title for the 1989 album Pretty Hate Machine? Uh, it had the word industrial in it, so it would have been real stupid. Uh, industrial... Something. Want a noun. Give me a noun. Light it's, and magic. Is it an industrial yeah. city or, like, industrial country? Fuck. I don't got it. I'll give you a half point, but the industrial nation. Ah, uh, that's really yeah. stupid. I'm <laughs> Pretty Hate Machine isn't much better, but... No, yeah. Do you remember the name of that one bootleg from the Pretty Hate Machine sessions that had the really poppy song on it? Yeah, The Purest Feeling. Do you remember the name of the really poppy song? <laughs> it's called The Purest Feeling. No, well, that was pretty poppy. Oh. There was another one, though, that was, like, aggressively... I thought that was pretty poppy. Uh, what's the other one? Maybe Just Once. Oh. Uh. That one. That's the one I always would show people to be like, <laughs> check out this asshole. Man, it's not he went on to write Hurt. Uh... Look at him go. Are we, out, are we out of questions? We are out of questions. Um, we can also just chill and play Quake for a minute. What I time am... is it? Yeah, what is what is the time? Uh, we got 7.49. Oh, well, yeah, it's just, we, can, we, can just, we can waste a little bit of time. Yeah, let's uh, give us some more Quake facts, because it's... Quake, I've been yeah. really paying attention to how much you've been, like... I'm sucking, actually. So with uh, with the original Quake, you mm -hmm. had to have the CD in, correct? To, in order music. to play the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, I think if you get emulated versions of Quake, there's no yep. music because of that. But, but that was the state of the art, right? Like, if yeah. you had a CD-ROM game, you always had the disc in. Like, it was yeah. pretty rare to, like, rip the entire what, disc and run it virtually. Was that one that you could play track two on? Yeah, it's yeah. uh, that book audio. Um, 
as opposed to Mary Claire or um, Glamour Audio. <laughs> That's a good. Uh, come on. So <laughs> I, I you're not. I don't, I don't read those yeah. magazines. <laughs> this game has a great soundtrack. I love the soundtrack. When I played this game back in the day, mm -hmm. I usually took out the Quake CD mm -hmm. and I put in um, the impression that I. Oh wait. Uh, yeah, that Mighty Mighty Boston. Let's face it. By the Mighty Mighty Boston, instead of listening to the Mighty Mighty Boston while playing Quake. So for the real like Dark Side of the Moon Wizard of Oz experience, <laughs> yeah, you play queue up some third wave ska and watch him run through Quake 64. Uh, that would be that would be my uh, preteen years. So with the items, you would uh, pick them up, pick them up, and run there. Yep. Man, um, that is. That's such a good fact. Let's see. I just yeah, want to do a trivia, trivia about us and our embarrassing pasts <laughs> from the eras that we were really into these bands. Uh, yeah. I remember there was a day in fifth grade where it was like, bring in CDs. We got a little boombox. We're going to play songs from everybody's favorite CDs. And everybody's like, I'll bring a Spice Girls. I remember kids literally cornered me and they're like, for every monkey CD you bring in, you're going to get a punch. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I own like so many. <laughs> That is most of my CD uh, collection so, at age 11. Wait, so did you bring in monkeys so I often that did. people started threatening you with violence? No, people just knew. Like, I had a shirt, because in 96, that was my first concert, was seeing them on their, like, 30th anniversary tour. Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom, New Hampshire, whatever. Really? Yeah, it was a really good show. I immediately spilled a very large Sprite on the shirt. <laughs> Saw them again at the same venue many years later, and I, I got a Sprite. Didn't spill it, but just as, like, a little psychic nod to the past, I was like, eh. Nope, not today. <laughs> Drinking it. Except but yeah, it was nice. a, we were crazy close at that show. My sister and her husband, the the OG fans, got like crazy VIP front ass row tickets. So it was like me, my dad, my sister and her husband, and then like a bunch of rich moms <laughs> down the, the length of the other tables we were at. So at one point I shook Peter Tork's hand, felt real cool, felt very special. Obviously that was like the one child in the front row, so I'm sure he was like, alright. You seem weirdly excited to shake the hand of me. Cool. All right, cool. Nice. But yeah, it was good. How so many times have you how seen? How many punches did you get? None. I think. I don't know if I. I think I might have been actually effectively scared out of bringing CDs in that day. <laughs> but uh, I feel like I hung out with Anthony, who was in that class, Mr. Nason, and I think we listened to something of yours at some point, probably. I assume you're out there. If not, you'll watch later. Hey, Anthony, how's it going? Yeah. How many times did you see Nine Inch Nails live in uh, your... Uh, only, only twice. Um, I feel like, I, much like the Monkees, I'm sure, kind of missed their heyday of live shows. Same, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, they, they do some really cool stuff. They have like some of the best. Um, they, Ooh, they've yeah. won awards for visual effects. They rightly so. Um, they're, they're really interesting. Really good experience. I really like seeing them. Uh, yeah. Didn't get tickets this time. Too expensive. Mm. Didn't oh, go wait in yeah, line. yeah. There was the literal go wait in line experience. Yeah. yeah. Which we did once, me and Stefan. Speaking of which... <laughs> and I might have, like, eased in front of our group. Anyway, <clears throat> got up to the line at the Orpheum Theater, and I was like, are there any tickets? Or like, we got one. And I was like, I'll take the one. So uh, I was uh, like... I was the person behind it. Yeah. So it, it's all done. Harsh. Yeah. I don't know if you... And that, I was really looking... That was when he toured for only. Like, uh, he was going to do only. Uh, it was mm. one of my favorite... Can, can chatters hear that? Our cameraman was snubbed out of a ticket. Yeah. That's some cold shit. Yeah. I know. And I went alone. I drove into Bo scary Boston, <laughs> parked my car, went to a show joylessly. Oh, wow. I know. I, I offered them any amount of money, too. Like, <laughs> I, was, I was shameless. Shit. <laughs> the, the, wait, the Ticketmaster people or me? No, no, I'm saying not you. I was like, I'd have given you the <laughs> ticket. Yeah, no, no, um, the, the, tick, the person, because we, we remember we yeah. went to the Orpheum, so oh, we yeah. figured we would have a better chance of getting tickets, which is not true. No, no yeah. yeah. Which is so funny that, like, last year he's like, you gotta show up in person and just be a, be a human. And I was like, we did that once, and it was like, we got fucked over by Ticketmaster online people. And me, if you're the other people in our <laughs> yeah. group. Sorry, Stefan, sorry, Cody. Alan, who else was with us that day? Yeah, was at least one other person. Yeah, though, man. Um, I do remember one of the first people that got a ticket came out and he was like, "Yeah, we're going to Nin," and I was like, "Who says Nin out loud?" Yeah, Christ, that's, that's didn't deserve it. You type it out, oh, maybe. Should, should you look up it. the like Cyrillic backwards end. <laughs> oh yeah, we're maybe. supposed to. We're gonna name this episode Jardinine with the backwards end, but we couldn't. That was the original. Figure name, out yeah. Could the figure out the alt command. Shout but, out to Tilly Conqueso for that brilliant yeah. uh, pun. Uh, our, uh, There's our, not a good monkeys John pun. The uh, Jonkies. Jon that just sounds gross. <laughs> no, it sounds like racist or Jardin something. Yeah. The 
But racist, I mean, Han's right. like honky. Yeah. <laughs> like, it sounds true. appropriately directed okay. at me. Yeah. <laughs> we are the jockeys. It's an individual slur. Yeah. Jeepers. Um, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, uh, I started playing... I started getting into Nine Inch Nails because, like, my friend's cooler older brother uh, had, like, Nine Inch Nails CDs, and his, his desktop background was, like, corn. Uh, that dude is cool. And I was like, uh, I tried to listen to corn because he seemed a little bit more into corn. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't listen to corn. That's fair. Uh, and I had played Quake, so I was like, mm. maybe, maybe, maybe Nine Inch Nails. I think my first stuck. exposure to them was the Closer video. And I feel like it was like 120 minutes on MTV, and they were like, we can only show this after a certain time of day. And I was like, you have my attention. Mm -hmm. And I watched it, and I was like, this is the coolest shit I've ever seen in my life. It's pretty cool. I was like, there's parts that are censored, and there's a part that's a scene missing. And I was like, what am I missing? <laughs> and then I watched it later. What I missed, it wasn't that interesting. It was mostly like The Monkey. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Or like Shrant's Nipple or something. <clears throat> Anyway. It being 7.55, is it time for some more sure. There might be songs? some music uh, in okay. the works. This has been Disc Rot Live, it season has. one. Thank uh, you so much. We're going to take a break for, I don't know. For like a, a minute. A couple weeks, couple a month or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe more than a minute. We will, but we'll be back with more gimmicks, more uh, jovial uh, this nonsense. Or whatnot. Is that mine? Oh, oh yes. I was going to turn on the... Oh, uh, whenever. Lights out as well, I think.
Going down. 